Hey, welcome back. It's a Friday edition of Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. And uh, we are cruising through the second hour on this Getaway Friday. And uh, Frank Morano joins me again. And uh, Rebecca Walzer was great talking about what's happened with the economy and the tax code. Uh, but when we, we go off the shores, uh, we talked about uh, Russia with uh, Professor Stephen Cohen a little earlier. Um, but now we bring back one of our military experts, Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, joins us. He's a U.S. Army retired, and uh, he's also with uh, Defense Priorities. He's a senior fellow. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel, thank you for joining us again on Liquid Lunch. Thanks for having me. So, uh, Frank and I, we try to get outside the boundaries of America every so often and try to talk about some stuff that could affect our safety and security here. Um, what do you think about Trump's plan or, or lack thereof? Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on uh, the Afghan troop withdrawal. Well, I, I, what I think we should be doing instead of talking about any specific deal with the Taliban per se is to just say that we're going to announce a complete military withdrawal over a time frame on a, of our own choosing. The thing that concerns me, at least what's been reported so far, the Washington Post is saying just this, uh, like a couple of hours ago that the president is going to be meeting with his national security advisor team uh, today, and they're going to be talking about this with uh, Ambassador Khalilzad. What's reported so far is that he's going to have a deal with the Taliban for some limited uh, ceasefire, limited withdrawal, and then they'll hand off to the Taliban and the Afghan government, who have to this date not spoken at all. And I think that's really the, the long pole in the tent here, and actually the big problem, because that could literally take years, and there's no reason to think that that would uh, ever work out, because they have been in such strong animosity. And I don't want to limit our response or our engagement there to what does or doesn't happen with the Afghan and the Taliban. Now, I'll say that the, the biggest concern that people have, as you just mentioned, is security. If we withdraw, are we going to be less secure here? Is there going to be a new 9-11 like Senator Graham seems to claim that there was? And the answer is no, absolutely. Our security is not predicated on those troops on the ground there. It's predicated on our profound global ISR inter, uh, strike and the cooperation between our local, federal, and state law enforcement officials. That's how we keep ourselves safe anywhere that terrorists may live, not just in Afghanistan, and it will keep us safe even after we leave there. So, uh, Colonel, I just want to draw down on exactly uh, what you're saying and what the implications are, and I, I am in lockstep with you on ending what's already the longest uh, running war in American history, but the president is at, in Bedminster today, uh, right across the river from us in New Jersey, meeting with his national security team, and the thing that frightens me is that every time this national security team gets a hold of him, they somehow manage to convince him that his good ideas are bad ones. But it appears that they're going to negotiate some sort of a deal with the Taliban, where the Taliban is going to be responsible for counterterrorism efforts. Um, but given your view, and really it's mine, that we should just end all uh, troop involvement in Afghanistan, what stops another 9-11 from happening? Why wouldn't the Taliban let al-Qaeda take root again and have the same sort of terrorist uh, for training facilities that they did in the run-up to September 11. Well, two big reasons. Number one is it's it's a myth that the not first 9-11 came from Afghanistan. It really came from a man, uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, and he did most of his planning actually in Sudan, in in, uh, in several other places in Africa, and only a little bit in Afghanistan. There was nothing special about Afghanistan. There was a lot special about that twisted mind in, Khalil, or, uh, in uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. So first of all, it didn't happen there, so it's nothing saying it's going to happen again from there or anywhere else. But we have to provide, protect ourselves no matter where the, the threat arises from. And that's what our global ISR strike capability allows us to do. So it's not true that we need to stay there in order to keep us safe here. So, uh, sorry, go ahead, Frank. No, I was just gonna ask, so uh, Colonel, um, right now, could it be seen that we're abandoning our allies with the Afghan government and saying, hey, good luck, you deal with the Taliban on your own? Do we have some sort of moral obligation to our, their government or the Afghan people to see this through? Well, I mean, just see this through. That's that's another big myth because that means that if you stay long enough, it'll succeed, and it won't. It we will not succeed militarily. So keeping the military there doesn't lead to a to an end. It leads to a perpetuation of the war, a perpetuation of the suffering. But our withdrawal will 
put the onus on the Afghan people and the people who in the region who have to come to a conclusion and negotiate an end for their own ends and in their own cultural means, which they have done for centuries and they'll do again here. As long as our military stays on the ground there, we, in a sense, actually prevent that from happening. But here's the thing, the really key thing here. It's not you know inhumane for us to leave. It's inhumane for us to stay there to perpetuate the war. By our withdrawal, we will now let this play out how it's going to play out, and it may be violent, and it may see a slight uptick. But the, if you look at the numbers over the last several years, with our forces on the ground, even after we elevated the numbers under Trump when he first got in there, the violence has gone up. Okay. So that's not going to keep us safe. All right. Well, Colonel Davis, I want to thank you so much for joining us, giving us your views on what we should be doing out there. I want to thank you for watching. You stay tuned for these commercials. We're going to come back. Frank's going to correct all my mistakes for the day and the week and everything. Perfect. My mistakes for the day and the week and everything. Perfect.